Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In one of my previous videos, I discussed about open telemetry for measuring telemetry of services. Now open telemetry is a fantastic product and with open telemetry, we can use different plugins to log our telemetry but it is not feasible and also practical to use open telemetry for every single scenario, especially for legacy applications or applications that we are doing for our own R&D purposes. Sometime it might be an unnecessary work to add open telemetry where we want to just do telemetry for a certain part of our application. Now, if you are starting a new product and it is uh, the product which is going to go into production and will be used by customers, by all means, we should be using product like Open Telemetry. But in case where we don't want, we can use the topic that I am discussing today, which is Stopwatch. Stopwatch is a class which is part of the system.diagnostics namespace. And the stopwatch itself provides with method and properties which can help us accurately measure time elapsed during an operation. And that is essentially what getting telemetry is all about, is understanding how much time is elapsed for a particular operation. So, as I mentioned, not every product and every smaller projects as well as organization open telemetry with product for logging the telemetry in cloud is a feasible solution. And in those cases, using stopwatch is a very good alternative and very good starting point for telemetry. Now let us take a look into how can we implement a stopwatch. So of course, for that, as I was mentioning, it's part of system.diagnostic namespace. And for creating a stopwatch, we can do var stopwatch is equal to new stopwatch. And as I mentioned, it is part of the system diagnostic namespace so now when we create a new stopwatch object we're just creating the object to start a stopwatch we have to do stopwatch.start and this is going to start the countdown for the stopwatch. And then here we can have some operations. And after that, we can do stopwatch.stop, which is going to stop the stopwatch. And then we can say our time taken is equal to stopwatch.elapsed. So stopwatch.elapsed is a time span which we can take or we can use a couple of other variables. So there is one called stopwatch.elapsed ticks which gets the total elapsed time measured by the current instance in the timer ticks. So it gives the ticks value or we can use the stopwatch.elapsed millisecond which gets the total elapsed time of the current instance in millisecond. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the milliseconds. But right now we do not have any operations here. So let's add an operation. So what I did is for that purpose, I created a class called item provider. And item provider class currently has a single method called get and it just returns an empty string. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a await statement and I'm going to say 
task.delay and I'm going to delay for five seconds. This is, I'm doing this to mimic an operation. This operation can be calling out to an external HTTP service or going into some sort of data store to get the data. I'm just mimicking the time taken by a task.delay. Now let me also change the name of this method from get to get async, just to keep the standard naming convention for asynchronous methods. Now once I do that, what I can do is, I can here, after I create the stopwatch, I can use var and item provider is equal to new item provider. And then here I can say item provider dot get async. And we're just going to give a response so I can just do await. Since I'm returning a string dot empty, I'm not even going to bother to do anything with that data. So next, what we can do is we can just take this millisecond and we can do console.write line and we can say time taken in millisecond is and we can say time taken. It's a very simple example. And uh, this is going to use, in an essence, the main feature of a stopwatch, which is the elapsed time. And we're using elapsed millisecond, which is elapsed time in a millisecond. And that is what we are going to log in our telemetry. So I'm going to run this application now, and then we'll go and check some of the other features of stopwatch, which are very useful. So once the application stops running, you can see the time taken is five seconds, 5,049 milliseconds, which is five seconds and 49 milliseconds. Five seconds is the wait time that we created. So now if we go here and if we do something else, we have this class called user provider, which is from a different example and for a different purpose, but it is doing some console.write line on a search user and doing stuff here, which is used in some other example. So I'm going to repurpose this code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to async task. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have await task dot delay and I'm going to add let's keep 100 milliseconds that's fair enough and then what I can do is this is the user provider class so I can go here and I can say var user provider is equal to new user provider and then I can do again stopwatch dot start and I can do user provider dot search user and I'm going to pass a random number and then wait and then after that I'm going to do stopwatch dot stop and then I can do console dot write line Time taken by user provider is, and this time I can just do this last millisecond here instead of keeping it in a variable. And let us run this application now. And if we run this application, of course, we will see two different time. The first one will be a little bit more than five seconds. And the second one is going to be five seconds plus the 100 milliseconds we added and a 10 second extra. So as you can see here, the time taken by the stopwatch 
even though we are stopping and starting, it is a cumulative time from the entire workflow. So how can you fix this? There are a couple of ways. There are a couple of ways to fix it. First thing is we can do this dot reset. And what reset is going to do is, so reset is just going to reset the timer of the stopwatch. So it will start starting from zero again. So now if we run this application, what is going to happen is we are going to see now the first one is taking five seconds plus, and the second one is take, taking a little bit more than 100 milliseconds. So we can see now the first one is taking five seconds and 23 milliseconds, and the second one is taking 113 milliseconds as expected. Now, these two statement can be technically combined together. And for that, all we have to do is and just comment this out and if we can do restart. Restart is going to stop the time interval measurement and then it is going to reset the elapsed time to zero and start measuring. That is what it is going to do. So now if we run this application, what is going to happen is we are going to see the exact same behavior of five second and a change millisecond for the second one, for, for the first one, and the second one is 100 plus millisecond as expected. And apart from restart, there are few other methods. So we, we discussed about stop, start, reset, restart. These are the most important ones. We also discussed about elapsed, elapsed millisecond, elapsed ticks. One thing is is running. Is running is a Boolean method which is going to show if the timer is running. So if you use it in between the start and stop, it is going to be true. And if it is after stop or before start, it is going to be false. This is something we can use to identify if the timer is running and then start or do not start. There's a very rare occasion where you will probably use it. Most of the time you will end up using restart. And if we just have to show this, so if I just do a console.write line and here we see is running, this is going to give me a true. And then after stop, if I just do the same thing is running, I'm going to get a false. So I should get a true false and then the time taken when I run this application. So at this point in time, you can see first it gives a true because it's in between then false and then the time taken. And this time it is giving same time for both. It is because we got rid of the restart as well as reset. So of course it is just giving, so it has never started, neither it reset. So it is just showing the same time as before, the time has never changed. So that's another thing. If you don't start after stopping the timer, if you don't explicitly start, it is not going to continue cumulatively counting the number. And if you do not reset, then it is not going to give you the appropriate number just for this operation. So as I mentioned earlier, almost always you'll be using an SWS dot by SW means, I mean the variable stopwatch dot restart in almost every single scenario. So now if I run it back, I'll see true false and the time taken in milliseconds will start making sense. It will be five millisecond plus and 100, five second plus and 100 millisecond plus as expected. So as I was telling in the beginning itself, there are occasions or there are applications where using open telemetry might not be the right solution. It's because of various reasons. It might be because you don't have enough time to implement it and go through it, or you might not have the need to telemetry or apply telemetry for the entire application. You just want to focus on a single part of the application. And on those cases, 
using stopwatch is a very good alternative. So this is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.